I'm sure a lot of you will remember when last summer I took on the grueling task of catching an Adam Exicana queen in Arizona. It took an incredible amount of perseverance and determination, and if you somehow missed that video, you should definitely check it out. Regardless, I did end up being successful, and now almost 10 months later have a healthy Adam Exicana colony. The only small problem is that I've been putting off upgrading their setup for months now. But now I can put it off no longer. My Atta colony desperately needs an upgrade, and I've finally decided to make it happen. The current setup is pretty pitiful. It's two small nesting chambers connected to a small outworld. It really doesn't showcase the ants very well or give them much space. After all, it was only supposed to be temporary. The first thing I need is a new nesting chamber. I bought this huge container to serve as the colony's new fungus chamber. It's got a capacity of around 6 liters and a height of about 8 inches, which should be perfect. It's over 12 times as large as their current nest chambers, so it'll give them plenty of space to expand into. I'll start prepping the nest by adding a hydration method. I'm going to let my soldering iron heat up before using it to melt a small hole in the bottom of the container. This hole is where water will be added to hydrate the chamber. I then add a pile of damp sand next to the hole. You'll see what this is for in a minute. In the meantime, I'll mix up a batch of UltraCal 30. This gypsum cement is hard and absorbent, making it a great substrate to use in ant nests. A quick pour later and it's all in place. That sand from before creates a chamber underneath the plaster for water to be added before it's absorbed by the plaster. The next day it's all cured and ready for the ants to move in. I used a drill to create a port for attaching a foraging area. Moving the ants is a relatively simple process, minus the part where the workers are running all over the place. To move the colony, I pick up the queen and move her with a pair of featherweight forceps, before grabbing the entire fungus garden and placing it in the new chamber. Yeah, it's that simple. Normally I'd recommend some vinyl gloves to protect your hands from the worker's bites, but oh well. With the colony moved over, I started feeding them a ton. Having a lot of empty space isn't great, as the colony may store trash in empty parts of the nest, so I want them to grow as fast as possible to fill out the space. I also want them to grow as fast as possible regardless. The whole reason I upgraded the setup in the first place is to have a big Atta colony. Much to my relief, the ants didn't seem too stressed by the move, and were eagerly cutting leaves and growing their fungus right away. The queen did seem maybe a bit uncomfortable, burying her head in the fungus, but overall she seemed fine. Over the course of the next two weeks, I was feeding this colony as much and as often as possible, twice a day if I could. They looked amazing in this new nest, and I wanted them to grow as fast as possible. I know how fast Atta can grow, and after keeping this colony tiny for half a year, I'm finally ready to let them grow dramatically. It didn't take long at all to start seeing results. Each day the fungus was growing a noticeable amount, and I started noticing brood pouring out of every little hole in the fungus. Clearly the queen was reacting well to her colony's new growing space. By the way, before I continue, I have an announcement. I have a Discord server now. This is the best place to get sneak peeks on upcoming videos, give feedback on videos, suggest ideas for future videos, and more. I've got it linked in the description if you're interested. Anyways, back to the Atta. While the ants are looking fantastic in their new nest, this upgrade isn't done yet. I still have the colony attached to a tiny dinky little foraging area. While it's working for the time being, it won't last long for a colony growing this quickly. It's time to upgrade. I got my hands on a large container. I selected this exact container for a reason you'll see in a minute. For now though, I need to prepare it by drilling a hole in it and applying a solid layer of Fluon, a slippery barrier that'll work to keep the ants contained. If you're interested in a Fluon application tutorial, let me know. While the Fluon on the walls of the container will work well, it's not quite enough. Atta are extremely good climbers and very persistent at escaping, so we need a bit more security. That's where the lid comes in. Not exactly a solid lid though. I cut the middle section out of the lid, allowing me open access to the foraging area for feeding and cleaning. The reason for leaving this rim is to apply Fluon to the underside of it. This upside down Fluon is practically impassable, and will keep the Atta contained extremely well, even if they eventually find their way over the barrier on the sides of the container. Now that the new foraging area is done, let's take a look at the upgrade. Much better, right? All that's left now is to transfer over any last workers from the old foraging area. 
A bit of the trash got moved over as well, but that's actually fine. When it comes to the fungus waste, this brown stuff here, it's actually a good idea to have a small pile of it in the foraging area at all times, so the ants have a designated garbage site, and don't try throwing trash inside the nest. Speaking of inside the nest, things are looking fantastic. The colony has already grown significantly in just a week's time, ferociously cutting plants and growing their fungus. At this point, the setup will be enough to hold a colony for at least a few months, and this nest and outworld will be used effectively permanently for the colony. As they grow, additional nests and foraging areas will be added as they're still occupying these ones. And now, two full weeks after moving the colony to their new nest, they're looking like this. Pretty phenomenal progress, right? It only took two weeks for the colony's fungus to nearly double in size, and they're showing no signs of stopping. I pretty much couldn't be happier at how well this upgrade has turned out. Not that I'm surprised or anything, I do know what I'm doing. Before this video ends, I have an announcement. If any of you watching are interested in keeping fungus growing ants for yourselves, I'm currently working on a care guide for every species of fungus growing ants. This is a huge passion project for me, and it will by far be my longest video yet. The guide is designed to be as exhaustive as possible, covering every single aspect of keeping as many fungus growing ants as possible. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then be sure to get subscribed. I don't have a set release date at the moment, but trust me, you definitely won't want to miss it. And okay, that's about all I have for now. With a happy, fast-growing Atta colony, it finally feels like all the effort I put into getting this queen last summer is paying off. Once this colony gets huge, I have some fun ideas for future setup upgrades that I'll be sure to share with you all once they happen. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.